I've always liked to get dirt under my fingernails. I've always wanted to be fearless. Part of that greatest generation that knew how to kill a chicken in the backyard for dinner. That wastes nothing. That makes the best of what they have and never points out what they don't. Thanks to my grandmother and her generation, I learned to cook with economy, with respect for simple ingredients. Thanks to them, I'm a modern pioneer. I'm Georgia Pellegrini. I'm an author, a chef, an adventurer, a gardener, a hunter, and an all-around modern pioneer. This all started when I was a child, growing up in my great-grandfather's land in upstate New York. I grew up fishing trout, eating it for breakfast, uh, foraging. I used to have chickens, I used to have honeybees and rabbits. I decided as a chef, I really wanted to pay the full price of the meal, so to speak. At the end of the day, there's really nothing better than catching your food with your own hands, building a fire with your own hands, and then cooking over that fire for your friends and family. So I hope you're hungry. To the great outdoors. Thanks, Georgia. Thank Life doesn't get any better than that. Wow. I love that. Talk about yeah. a girl's night out. Don't so you want to do that? I'm there. Georgia, invite Carla and I. Alone. I know. We want to go camping with That's you. That's a shotgun along with her bag of knives. She cooks what she kills, and she writes all about it in her memoir slash cookbook called Girl Hunter. Please welcome Georgia Pellegrini. Hello, Georgia. Hi. How are you? Doesn't that seem fun? Yes, ingredients here. Good. I love I zesty. Your, I hear you're a good cook, so you can just dive in with me. This yeah, but shallots. you know, it's really a sham here when I'm just, I wind up just dumping things that have been pre-measured into a bowl, and it's embarrassing. Well, I'm going to make you crack some eggs. Oh, so that, that I can do. Uh, that. That. Okay, all right. So we're, we're doing all kinds of fun things. Shouldn't like, we shoot these? <laughs> you can toss them up and Should I'll shoot. Should I put that in there, or am I... Uh... Yeah, go for it. Okay. Dive in. All right. Just all right. Little shells add, add flavor anyway, you know? Yeah, yeah. And then we're going to do all kinds of herbs. Okay. We've got parsley here. Got some basil. What if people don't have a wild boar? Can you substitute out regular pork? You can use pork? hog from a farm for sure. I see. It'll just be more moist. I'm actually adding ricotta here and some cream, and that's going to add some fat to the leaner wild boar. I see. They're leaner because they're out running around. Yeah, they're athletes. Running from you. Yeah, running yeah. from me, exactly. Running from each other. Mm -hmm. They're Better athletes, you know? They have rabbit. lots of muscle. That's a good one. That's a really good one. <laughs> Who doesn't love fried anything? Uh, sauteed snuffleupagus? Yeah, that's oh, good. I actually made that one up. Uh, color, that one. Curried pigeon. Now, when you, you say, you're talking about pigeon, can you go, like go into Central Park and grab a <laughs> pigeon and eat it? Well, like I said, you are what you eat, right? So you have to think about what it's been eating. Cigarettes? Yeah, I mean, it could be flavorful. <laughs> a little yeah. smoky flavor, you know? <laughs> I see. And uh, one other one. So. If you're eating squirrels, imagine how delicious you would be. That's true. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're going to fall into meatballs together. You ready to get your okay, hands dirty? I'm ready, yeah, yeah. All right, so dive in. So we're going to start making. Uh, Little balls, just about two inches, just like right. that. These are little there you go. Boar balls. Boar balls, yeah. Guillermo, have you ever eaten boar balls? No. <laughs> Guillermo's disturbed over there. Yeah, he's not so sure about this. Guillermo doesn't like eating stuff like that. He likes tongue, right, Guillermo? <laughs> La lengua. La lengua, yeah. All right. So we got a nice and compact. We got a nice compact. Here, taste one of those, will you? What do you think? <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> You're supposed to cook them right first, out. I think. Yeah, come up here. Some of this. You need to have a little taste. Yeah, don't eat the raw one. Here, Gamble. Here, I think we even have little plates if we want. Oh, he doesn't like plates. You want to be fancy about it. Well, you can just use your hands. There you go. All right, let's try these off the plate and see how they taste. All right. Now, you did not kill this boar, boar so you cannot vouch for it's this true, it's true. one specifically I didn't bring this here. one in my suitcase. Okay. I'm going to taste it. <laughs> wow. It Did I convert like you? Death. You like four now? Delicious, delicious death. It's actually very good. A dish right now, and instead of beef, we're using bison. We're, using we're not bison. suggesting people go out and hunt a bison. No, not everyone can do that, unfortunately. So where do you get the bison meat? You know, a lot of, uh, you can get it in the store now. It's actually uh, becoming much more popular because it's leaner. And how does it, what's the taste difference between bison and beef? So it's more tender, it's a little bit sweeter, and it's actually a lot more nutritious and lean, All which right, is so great. You floured so the cubes you floured a little bit. Vegetables. You swept them until they're nice and juicy, and you add them to your, oh, there we have visitors. You add them yeah. to your meat. Mm -hmm. It's super simple. The secret ingredient here is Marsala wine. Oh. That's what makes the kitchen taste phenomenal. It then you have so your good. tomato paste. Is that an egg? Beaten right. egg. That's mm -hmm. going to help bind it a little bit. Then you have little herbs. These are favorite herbs. I'm using basil 
and the little parsley. That's my grandma's favorite. And these are panko breadcrumbs here. Mm, yeah. And that's also going to help bind things. Very you're going to mix that together Thank with you your hands. Yep. And how long is that going to cook? I can't wait to try. 40 minutes. It's a lot leaner than beef would be. And I'm somebody Delicious. who likes to do all kinds of flavorful proteins other than your standard beef and chicken. So I always encourage venison, elk, turkey. And, and again, it's about thinking differently about the meats you use in preparing mm. your meals. Georgia, so thank moist. you so much. Thank Delicious. you. Great to have you. where my ingredients come from and roll up my sleeves and sort of pay the full karmic price of the meal. Really understand what it is to be an omnivore in this world and, and sort of participate in the cycle of life. It's so easy to get disconnected from our food sources with the pace of life being so fast. And this is a way to sort of go back from Wall Street to the wilderness, this self On the same land that my great-grandfather lived on. You know, we have honeybees and chickens and we grew up you know, really living off the land. So it's just a, the next logical step. I used to go fishing with him for, for my trout for breakfast growing up.